Figure 20.2 STL container common functions. In this table we have two columns where the left column lists the common functions that you'll find in most of the STL containers and the right column lists a description of each of these as well. So just briefly I'd like to take a look at the capabilities that you'll find in most of your STL containers. Each of them is typically going to have a default constructor to initialize the container uh, without any specific elements in it. A copy constructor that's going to allow you to make a copy of an existing container to initialize the new one that you're creating. A destructor uh, to deallocate the dynamic memory associated with the container. And I'm going to skip down here also to the operator equal sign, which is the assignment operator. And as you may recall from our operator overloading discussions, when you have a class that manages memory for you, it is typically going to have a copy constructor, a destructor, and an overloaded assignment operator as well to make sure that when you use those capabilities that the dynamic memory will get managed properly. Now we also have an empty function to determine whether a container is empty, an insert function that allows you to insert an item into the container at uh, different positions, a size function that tells you how many elements are currently in the container, and you see here the uh, various relational operators, less than, less than or equal to, greater than and greater than or equal to, that can compare the entire contents of a container against another container of the same type to see if the first container is less than, less than or equal to, greater than or greater than or equal to the other. As I scroll down a little bit more here, you can see that we also have equality and uh, inequality operators as well. And we have a swap function, which will literally swap the entire contents of two containers. Now, next in the table, we have a section that lists out the functions that are only in the so-called first class containers. That is, the ones that are not considered to be container adapters like stack uh, queue and priority queue. So these would be for the sequence containers and the associative containers. There is a max size function that determines the maximum number of elements that can be stored in a given container. And then we have these functions begin, end, rbegin, and rend. And these are actually functions that return what we call iterators that allow us to walk along the contents of a container. So begin is an, uh, returns an iterator that is aimed at the first um, element of the container. <coughs> End is going to give us a, an iterator that represents the position after the last element in the container. And then R begin and R end are the reverse of those two. So R begin basically points to the last element in the container, and R end points to one position prior to the first element in the container. And we will typically be using these in our looping data structures to help us iterate through the contents of a container. We also have an erase function which clears uh, one or more elements out of the container, erases them, and finally a clear function that erases all of the elements from the container at once. And we'll be using most of these functions throughout this, uh, this lesson.